Okay, so this is the reconciliation totem that is being carved by Jim Hart and his team of carvers. And Jim is in the navy blue back there with a navy blue cap on. And the, the totem is out at the Museum of Anthropology right now. And I'm just going to get all of this in. And standing behind carving is Gualaga. And that is Jim and my good friend Posey's son, who is a carver as well, a master carver. And that's the totem. So I'm just going to introduce Posey, who is my good friend from childhood, and she's going to explain because Jim needs to be carving. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's grade one. Okay, so just the pole is red cedar. It comes from Haida Gwaii. The tree was 800 years old. And to explain the carving, the bottom part of the pole is not carved. That's what's actually going to stand in the ground. And you read a totem pole from the bottom up. The most important part of the pole is the bottom of the pole because it has to support everything that's on top. So underneath the coat where John Grant has just put him is the salmon house. And the salmon are the most important because they feed everybody. So the shaman is on top. He's got one hand up and on the other side he'll have a he's got a rattle. Anyway, he's protecting the salmon house. And the figure here, the main figure, Jim is carving on the nose. It's a bear, bear mother story. There's a cub on one side and a cub on the other. And you can see the cub's ears. Mm -hmm. And his front paws, his knees, and his feet. And, and the symbolization of it before residential school. So the symbol symbol of the cub is it's it's a bear mother story. A bear mother story. Yeah. Okay. So there's twin cups, one on either side. And up here. And this is Jim Hart, the master carver. The bears. And the designer. I, You're the yeah. designer of the whole. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So up here Here's is the, the ears. And you'll see coming out of one of the ears is a wing of the raven here. There's the raven, his ears, eyes, and his beak on the top. Now the raven was the trickster. Am I yes, right? Yes. Who captured the sun? All right. So next we have the residential school. Okay. And in the residential school are copper nails. And the copper nails represent the children that died at residential school. Each nail. Each nail. So how many? 57,200 nails are going into the Oh my pole. goodness. 57,200. Yeah. Yeah, and there's two more pieces of the residential school. One is here, as you can see, you're seeing the part that's getting attacked, so it's not carved. Excuse me for looking in front. As you okay. can see here, it's uh, designed from a residential school called Kokolitsa, where Jim's grandfather, Jim's chinny, went to Kokolitsa. So most of the residential schools are this old design, was it an old English Tudor style okay. building? Of course, yeah. Yeah. So above the residential school, you'll see little children, and they are the survivors of residential school. Their feet are non-existent, and their it's feet. because they weren't grounded anymore after residential school. Took away their language, their names, everything. The children were given a number. And the fellow that did that face there, right by the fellow's elbow, it's got the number E51613. Yes, and that was the number that was given to him. E meaning Eskimo, five is the region, and that was his specific number. There's another number here that's going to be carved in, I believe it's 702. This woman actually buried the children that passed away. She buried. She children? buried them, and she is still, you know, she she's she's with us today. Mentally, she's doing really, really, really well. But it's taken a long, long time for her to 
Yeah, so they're yeah. known by numbers. Carry on. on. Yeah, it's amazing. The detail in here is just fascinating. Yeah, yeah. So like Jim is getting face. people from different yeah. nations to carve faces. Okay. So the pole is Haida in a sense because Jim is Haida. But different stuff. people from different um, nations are carving the faces. Wow. So then above him you have a whale. And you can see the whales. Pectoral fin here. See okay. This long oh yes. Long piece. Yes. And this is a thunderbird. His beak. Okay. And so it's representative of land, air, sea, and water. The figure. Land, air, sea, and water. Yeah. Okay. And then above that is the family getting stronger together. Now uh, we have uh, the father on the top here, mm -hmm. and the mother is on the bottom. She's actually facing the ground because the pool is carved all in the ground. Right, right. And the children, these are young women. The women have the, uh, the loop plug down below that may um, get a piece of abalone put in. I know the mother underneath, you can't see it, but yeah. she's got a piece of abalone in her lower lip. Wow. And the father is having abalone in the headdress nice. above him. You're so good, Sydney. And then above this part that looks like water, we have a canoe. And the canoe has different... Is this the canoe here? That, no, that's a long boat. Okay. Canoe representing First Nations people. And all the paddles are made out of yellow cedar. And they're done in different styles. There's going to be eight put in. Three here at the moment. Nice. Anyway, they're done in different styles representing different First Nations people. And the long boat is going to have oars put in it. Obviously, all the same size. And will those be on the top? Yes, there. See, see how the squares cut in there? Yes. And cut in here? Yeah. It's going right on to here. One on one side, one on the other side. Cool. And then there's four big copper shields, and they're being put on the pole here, and there's going to be a, a patina put on them, white, red, yellow, and black, representing all First, all first Nations, all people right. of the world. And then on the top, an eagle. An eagle. Just taking off. And it's meant to be moving on into the future in a good way together. I love it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So it's that's the whole emotional. Yeah. Yeah. That's very very cool. Yeah. So what I think is wonderful is that they're actually teaching residential school in I these know. schools now, whereas it's they never amazing. did before. No. It was like a subject nobody wanted to touch on to, and now they yeah. are, which is so great. Yeah. Because this is. This is a, an important part of our history. It was black and it was dark and it was ugly. Yeah. But it is an important part of our history. Kept from us. Yeah. And kept from us. Yeah. Absolutely. I didn't know this was going on when we were in school. Oh, I know. We never were taught. We were never taught anything about this. So here's the other part of the residential school here. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. And how many nails are going in again? 57,200. 57,200. Yeah. Wow. I think it's like 700 pounds of copper nails. Yeah, 700 pounds of copper nails. 700 pounds of copper nails. You're so good. Can I put her down for a second? Of course. Of course. So how long have you been working on this, Jim? Just over two years, and you did you get the tree from back east? Haida Gwaii. You got the tree from Haida Gwaii. Yeah. You did. Yeah. And it needed. I didn't think they would. It's hard to find a wood carver from back so, east. To so in Haida Gwaii, they you you found the tree, and did it need to be a certain size? This is the. The Oh, I see. One was too scruffy and small. And, uh, and did you, was there a ceremony to take it down the tree? No, no, no. We did a prayer. You did a prayer? So, how old would this tree be? 800 years. Over a year to find it. Wow. 